OSHA said the tampering of the site was done before and after they had left. This included cleaning out the area where the motor was located and adding a lockout tagout sign to the machine. That's wild! That's wild! We're going to talk about this crazy story. Um, and I think Infinite Content maybe was the first one to, to uh, flag it for us on Twitter. But also, somebody sent us a message about this paper mill worker death. And they asked, did you hear about this uh, paper mill worker who died of electrocution at work last year? The company, this is coming from uh, our listener, the company tried to lie about the cause of death. Business Insider just came out with a story about it yesterday, April 14th. I work in manufacturing and the details of how unsafe this workplace is are really scary. OSHA proposed 227,000 in fines. Thanks for your work. Thanks for listening. And so let's check out this Business Insider reporting because it is wild. It's absolutely crazy. And so the bottom line is that is is that a a paper mill worker in Alabama and not not a greenhorn either. You know, this is not somebody who just came in out of high school, didn't know what the hell they were doing and screwed some stuff up, right? Uh, this was a 12-year veteran of the company. Been working there 12 years. Knows his stuff, this guy. And he died because he was electrocuted because a supervisor did not lock out and tag out the machine. And then, after he was electrocuted, the company reported to OSHA that this guy, oh, he just had a heart attack. It wasn't related to our unsafe working conditions. He just had a heart attack. That's wow. what they told OSHA. And then... They also, the machine did not have a lockout tagout sign when the incident occurred. But then after the incident, they put up a lockout tagout sign on the machine and took a picture of that and sent it to the police department. Just bald faced lying about a worker's death. I mean, this guy died because their boss screwed stuff up. And then, on top of that, they tried to cover it up. They tried to cover it up and just make it out like this guy. He just had a heart attack. He just had a heart attack. And so the coroner said, no, this doesn't look like a, just a, uh, you know, just a normal everyday heart attack, heart attack. This guy was electrocuted, actually. And so the coroner reported that to OSHA. And then get this, the company's lawyer calls the coroner and says, hey, you know, would you care to uh, lie for us on your form and say that, no, actually, it was, I got it wrong. I got it wrong. He wasn't electrocuted. It was actually just a regular heart attack. Just insane. I mean, just vile, evil stuff here uh, from the company. South Coast Paper LLC. South Coast Paper LLC. LLC. I mean, just really, really crazy stuff. And so reading from this Business Insider piece, according to a report by the DOL's Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, the company reported the incident as a heart attack and asked the local coroner's office to not list electrocution as a cause of death. Um, and this is another thing that's just a, kind of a sidebar. But coroners are elected, which is the craziest thing in the world. Uh, and so... You could imagine a situation where this goes a different way because the coroner's campaign was funded by South Coast Paper LLC. Um, right. Just the crazy, just the most bizarre thing in the world that coroners are elected positions. Um, but but that's the case. That's the case. Uh, the a, a, the plant's manager and company general manager told an OSHA certified health and safety officer that the worker. Um, uh, had died from electrocution, but the but the company had already written witness statements listing the cause of death as electrocution. But they went back and they were saying they were t the company, you know, the big corporate entity was trying to say like, no, 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 no that's not it. Hmm. OSHA it's said awful. that yeah, OSHA said that the electrocution happened when the employee who had been at the company twelve years was working on the line of a sheeter machine with two other workers when they alerted the night shift supervisor that something was wrong with the conveyor's motor. 
The supervisor decided to replace the motor, but did not lock out or tag out any of the equipment in the process, and when the employee grabbed a metal rail connected to the conveyor system, he was shocked by the electricity. CPR was administered, but he was pronounced dead on site. Lockout devices are placed on energy isolating devices to hold them in a safe mode and to prevent the equipment from being controlled, while tag out devices indicate that the equipment can't be used. OSHA wrote in its report that the supervisor had not had any formal or on the job electrical or lockout and tagout training mm. and, quote, had minimal knowledge of electrical practices. Wow. And this is another this is another issue about management not coming from the line. The idea that you can be a manager in a manufacturing environment and have and have zero formal or on the job electrical training? That's wild. That's wild stuff here. OSHA said that a local police chief had been informed that tampering of the site was done before and after they had left. This included cleaning out the area where the motor was located and adding a lockout tagout sign to the machine. Lockout tagout was not done for the machine, but was in place when pictures were given to the police department, OSHA wrote right. in a report. They knew they did wrong yeah. and they tried to cover it up and that's just despicable. South Coast paper, quote, does not have energy control procedures in place and no locks or tags are available to no locks or tags are available to maintenance employees other than two personal locks that one worker brought from his previous employer. Holy crap. OSHA proposed two hundred twenty seven thousand dollars in penalties. It noted that also in 2021, OSHA had inspected South Coast papers facility in Burlington, New Jersey. After an employee had lost three fingers while servicing a machine and had issued a citation to the company related to its energy control procedures. Just terrible stuff here and no reason for it. No reason for it at all. Alex says, I'm in tech, so I'm blessed to have opportunity. Uh, that said, very, very few unions. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, this is just um, just really, really really gross stuff. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh dude 87 mentions that if coroners were appointed, corruption could still enter the process. Not sure how we could fix it under the current system. I think that probably, probably appointments would be maybe less subject to corruption, but I, I, I don't just, know about I don't that. Know. I think, I think either way, it really just depends on how engaged the community is. And like, yeah. is anyone actually paying attention? Because frankly, you know, you're, you're not, prone to pay attention to what the coroner's doing, right? right? That's not a high profile position. So, but this is a good case of where it could really be relevant. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, wild story, really gross stuff. Uh, but you know, that's what, uh, that's what, that's what bosses do. That's what companies do, right? That's why, uh, that's why it's important to be organized against this kind of stuff because, uh, they're going to want run wild if you allow them. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm. 